Oh, uh, hi, I uh, didn't see you there, this is awkward. Anyways, my name is Aiden, and today I'm going to be running you through a pretty simple tutorial on how to motion track uh, facial bruising onto your talent. I'll uh, close this down and open up After Effects. Excuse my desktop, it's, uh, believe it or not, cleaner than my room. Anyways, uh, this is the footage we're going to be working with today. As you can see, it's uh, nothing special, uh, just shot in a Canon 5D, this was for a short film. Uh, we didn't have any motion tracking in mind when we shot this, so I was just playing around with this footage today and uh, managed to get a really nice track out of it using Mocha. Uh, you can always use stuff like a camera track or a Buju, but those are super expensive. And the cool thing about Mocha is it comes with uh, uh, After Effects CS4 and up. Uh, so hopefully you don't have to pirate anything for this. I'm not going to condone it but I'm touching my nose right now, do whatever you want, I don't care. Alright, uh, so that's a, the plain footage, this is what we're going to be doing with it. So as you can see, I've just done some minor colour correction, but there's a uh, facial bruising, just uh, motion track nicely onto our talent. Uh, you can see that I've gotten a really nice track out of it, just using uh, the planar tracking system that is Mocha, and uh, if I just scroll through it, you can see how nicely it's tracked onto the subject, and it's super easy too, so uh, I hope you enjoy this. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is open up Mocha. Okay, so now that Mocha is open, what we're going to need to do is import our footage, so just come up here to the top left, and you want to choose your footage name. Um, the file I'm going to include is called Bru uh, Bruising Raw Footage, so just open that up and import it in. It should pop up here, too easy, press OK. Alright, now if you have a look, it's just the footage, nice and easy, it's pretty similar to After Effects. Now, there's a lot of controls here that aren't going to make a whole lot of sense. Um, I'm just going to show you a really basic way of, uh, of tracking this footage. Uh, hopefully I'll do a more advanced tutorial later, but this will come in handy for any sort of tracking situation where After Effects isn't quite getting the results you want. So the first thing you want to do is just zoom into the subject you want to track. So I'm just going to use, come in here using this button right here. Next, I'm going to click, um, select the Create X Spline Layer Tool. Let's click on that, and what I'm going to do is create a plane for the, uh, or basically a flat image for the computer to track. Now, keep in mind, when the computer's tracking, it's looking for high contrast areas where, say, black meets white, or in this instance, a good example would be where his eyebrows meet his skin. So what we're going to do is just draw a little Zorro mask around him, just come up here and just around his eyes because you want to track through there and that should do nicely and now instead of clicking away just click this button here to end that track now what you need to do is um, track forward it's just this button button down here and as you can see it's sticking pretty nicely so far but as he turns his head the cool thing about Mocha is that it handles movement pretty damn well because we've given it a set series of images, it's going to look for those images no matter where it goes. And it's not always perfect, it's not great for really high movement footage, but for this example it should work fine. As you can see, this is far better than anything uh, After Effects would do without any tracking markers. I could have used his eyes, but because he keeps blinking, it makes it really difficult. And also the motion blur kind of gets rid of the chance of using your eyebrows. So this is the best bet. And you can use this for whatever you want. It doesn't have to be facial bruising. It could just be any uh, motion tracking job where you're really struggling to get the result you want out of After Effects. Okay, so now that's finished, I'm just going to go down to here and go export tracking data. Now I'm going to go through here, you want it to be set to After Effects CS3 corner pin and you're going to say copy to clipboard and minimize mocker. Now I'm going to go through to my raw footage and I'm going to create a new null object. The same as you would for any motion tracking. Now the cool thing about uh, mocker is that now that I've got all this tracking data, all I need to do is bring it back to the first frame and just paste it and it should be set there. So if we have a look at our null object, it's now attached nicely to our talent. So it's not absolutely perfect, but it's all you need, and it's far better than what you're going to get out of After Effects. So if you have a look, it's pretty well tracked. 
That's sweet. I'm just going to go back to the first frame. Now what we're going to do is start creating the bruise. And this is super simple. Anyone can do this. Uh, it's easier than you think. So what you need to do is create a new solid. And what I'm going to do is make a purple solid. Make it nice and dark purple. So come up here. A uh, bit darker than that. That should do. Okay. And for now, just turn that off. The op opacity of that layer off so you can see what you're doing. What you're going to do is create a mask just around the bottom of his eyelid to create a black eye. I like to think I know what black eyes look like because I'm a smart ass and I've had plenty of them. So just come under here. We're going to feather it out. So go, don't go directly under the, where the eye is because the purple will go over the top. So what we're going to do is come here and just bend it around there nice and easy. Too easy. Now that we've got the mask set, we can turn the opacity back on. I'm going to click this layer to turn off the mask, or just the mask outline, so we have a better look of what we're doing. Okay, so right now it looks like crap, and that's okay because we're going to do some editing to it. First things first, let's set the um, transfer mode to overlay. What that does is it kind of takes in some of the uh, the the information behind it, so it's almost like an ad, whereas it, it kind of the transparency goes down and it looks a lot better. I'm going to drop the transparency down to about I don't know 40. And I am going to feather the mask to, let's have a look. Ooh. Let's say, let's bring the opacity back up to 80. All right, 100. Let's bring it back up to 100, scratch that. And let's do the feathering at 30. All right, now that I've got that, I can move it to where I want. So uh, I'm going to click uh, Apple Shift H to get rid of all the information, all the uh, little menu bars so you can see it nicely. That's looking pretty good. Um, let's drop the opacity back down to about 80. All right, that's just the first layer. So right now, it doesn't look that special. It just looks like it's got pink eye. What we're going to do is we're going to parent this layer to the null object. And what this is going to do is stick it to his face. All right, so now that we've got this uh, this first layer down nicely, what we're going to do is just uh, kind of build up some more layers over the top of it just to make it look a bit more convincing. So the first thing we're going to do is just duplicate this first layer and zoom in a bit more and just kind of make a small lump. Even if you want to just chuck a little mask over the top here, and I'll turn that off just to give you a look at what we're doing. Go into the masks and set it the second mask to intersect. As you can see, it just kind of goes over the top. And we're going to feather out that second mask to, I don't know, that looks pretty good, just 15. And if you have a look, it's subtle, but it kind of helps sell it a bit more because the blood tends to gather around one spot. And right under the eye is pretty good. Now, we don't need to uh, parent that because it's a duplicate, it's already parented. What we're going to do is create one final uh, solid. Uh, this time we're going to make it uh, like a mu gross, musty, browny, yellow kind of look. And this is kind of because there's usually a fair bit of like bleeding out and it kind of spreads out and swells. and. I personally find that whenever I get bruising, it goes more browny yellow than blue. So what I'm going to do is just chuck this under the neath there and just kind of make it a little bit bigger than the first one. Let's chuck that there, turn the passive back on. First thing I'm going to do is just bring it down underneath the two because it's underneath everything. Set that to overlay as well. I'm going to turn the mask uh, outline off. And now what I'm going to do is set the opacity way down. I'm going to click T for opacity and bring it down to, I think, 20 should be good. And I'm probably going to eat my words later, but I'm going to go to the mask and feather it out. Feather it out a fair bit. Okay, I'm going to bring the opacity to, let's say, 40. Let's see what that looks like. All right, whatever, 100. Shut up, this is my first tutorial. Be nice. And feather it out a little bit more. And now if you have a look, it looks like a pretty convincing black eye. Uh, I'll toggle the layers on, so as we go through. So first we've got the uh, the 
the outer ring. Then we've got the little blood buildup and the blue swelling. And that's all it takes. Uh, don't forget to parent all your bruising layers to the null object. And if we scroll through that now, I'll zoom out a bit. We have a pretty sweet track. So that's looking pretty good, and that's all you really need to do. Um, what I like to do all the time is with my compositing is to chuck, even if it's a subtle uh, color correction over the top, it just kind of tends to tie everything in with the original footage. So I'm just going to do a layer new adjustment layer, go in, just uh, go to color correction curves, just drop the blacks down just a tiny bit, and the whites up a tiny bit, and that just brings up the contrast. As you can see, it's not a huge difference, but it helps bring out the bruise a little bit more. Then I like to go to color correction, color balance, and just warm up the footage a bit. This was a feel-good movie until the main character died. Spoiler alert, uh, you're never going to see it anyway. Alright, so I'm going to bring up the reds, about five each. That's made it a bit pinky, if you have a look. So I'm going to bring down, let's say, the blue to minus five. And what that's going to do is by bringing down the blue, you're going to up the yellow. So I'm going to bring that and that's plenty. If you have a look, there's a tiny difference, but subtlety is better. You don't want to go over the top. Even with your compositing, I know it's really tempting that once you uh, once you learn a new effect to go crazy over the top, but the best kind of compositing is the type that you don't really notice happening. So if we have a look, that's looking pretty sweet. Now that's all you really need to do. You can render that out and you're done. You can use this for whatever you want. If your girlfriend cheats on you, you could film her, motion track it, and then put slot on her head, whatever you want. Alright, um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I wanted to keep it short and sweet. Uh, keep in mind, I'm no Andrew Kramer. I've only been doing this for about a year and a half now. Uh, I am an amateur filmmaker slash student. I'm trying to get better, so hopefully you like this. Uh, subscribe for more. Like it, favourite. Um, if you do go to the effort of doing this with your own footage or mine, uh, please uh, send me a video response. I'd love to see what you're capable of. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.